Welcome to the car guys and this week an icon of motoring, the mighty Mark 1 Ford GT in red with a white stripe looking frankly fantastic. This is the first time that I've ever driven a Ford GT and I am more than excited to get behind the wheel of this 5.4 litre Goliath. The original GT40 won Le Mans and this is the 2004 Tribute Act and by all accounts it's an absolute honey to drive. So this week we are going to take a forensic look at the history, the interior, the exterior design, special features, its controversial name and I'm going to drive the hell out of it. So if that sounds like your special kind of V8 supercharged muscle car vodka, let's get on with it. Ford's dominant victory at Le Mans with the GT40 in 1966 and three subsequent years humiliated Ferrari out of the event and for over 50 years. In fact, 2023 is the first time Ferrari returned to Le Mans and it won. The genesis of a brand new 21st century GT40 came on a flight to Sweden with the global head of product development Richard Parry Jones and Jay Mays, head of design at Ford. The two discussed the importance of the GT40 in Ford's history and that a new mid-engine supercar should be created to pay homage to the original and celebrate Ford's centenary and also make powered by Ford really mean something again. Work began back at Ford's HQ and it was given the name Project Petunia so that no one would ask any questions or think that it was important in any way. The new car was designed by Camilo Pardo, chief designer at Ford, but it wasn't a smooth process and Pardo relied on collectors of the original GT40 to provide their cars for the team to measure and for inspiration. The concept GT40 was shown at the 2002 North American International Auto Show and the new project was approved on the 19th of February 2002 following a positive reaction to the concept. The first prototype was created by Roush Industries for Ford and it was completed in just nine months and shown to the Ford employees in November 2002. Just imagine how proud they must have felt. The Ford GT was put into production in 2004 and lasted until 2006, with four and a half thousand cars initially planned. And note, Ford GT, not GT40, because as it turned out, the trademark for the GT40 name was owned by an Ohio-based company called Sophia GT40 Spares, and it demanded $40 million for Ford to use the name. Since it was a limited run supercar, Ford declined and instead changed the name to Ford GT. By the end of 2006, 4,038 Ford GTs were produced, 10% less than expected, though this did include 346 heritage editions to celebrate Ford's 1966 Le Mans win, all of which were painted in blue and orange, Gulf oil colours, and had a racing livery. Initially, just 100 cars were earmarked for the whole of Europe, though many more have now snuck their way in. As you can see here, motoring journalist, Top Gear and Grand Tour presenter Jeremy Clarkson was famously one of the lucky 28 or so UK owners with that original batch. And also so famously were the reliability issues that he had with that dark blue car. Anyone who claims to be a petrol head cannot fail to be moved by the shape of the Ford GT, even though it's larger in every dimension than the 60s GT40. The original height was famously 40.5 inches, hence the GT40 name, but the new car was for the road and needed to be larger. So it's 43.5 inches, eight centimeters taller, it's 6.8 inches, 17 centimeters wider, and 12.6 inches, 32 centimetres longer. The original GT40 had an all steel chassis. This new one is an all aluminium space frame with unequal length upper and lower control arm suspension, coil springs, monotube aluminium dampers, and an anti-roll bar and a limited slip differential. You also got rack and pinion steering and look what we have here, 355 millimetre brakes, cross drilled and vented naturally. So let me take you around this magnificent red and white beast. I'll show you all the little bits that interest me or are significant to the car. Sound good? All right, let's do it. So as you can see, it's 
enormous, this car, far larger than the original 60s, but in the same proportions. What I love about it is how aggressive it is, but also how faithful it is to the original car. We've got the Ford logo proudly displayed here at the front, and right on this front section, you've got two enormous grills which go through to fans to help suck the car down. The headlights are these colossal recessed units which sit down flush with the bodywork in order to allow for a better drag coefficient. This car sits quite low to the ground but it's quite manageable day to day and it doesn't have a lifter. Absolutely love the spider design of these polished alloy wheels and of course you've got to have that classic 60s Ford GT decal on the side. What's this little latch here Damien I hear you ask? Well actually you see these little polished bits here these are to open the front section of the car. You insert the key the ignition key into this little slot here you turn it uh, probably just less than a quarter clockwise and then you pull out this lever. That releases the front. The front then lifts forward to reveal the capacious luggage area. I'm joking of course, it's absolutely tiny and because of the deep recessed shape of that bonnet or hood to allow for those fans and vents means that there is negligible luggage space in this car. You can't even fit a bag in there. You might be able to fit, if you're lucky, a soft jacket. Now you can't do a walk around of a Ford GT or indeed a GT40 without mentioning the doors. They're not scissor doors, they're not dodecodohedral doors, but they do have one very distinctive feature. They're quite steeply raked here as it moves up to the roof line, and it is quite disappointing to see that Ford put electric door catches under here to open the doors. That is a recipe for going wrong in my opinion, but when you open it like that and you pull it open, you see that in fact a significant portion of the roof comes away with it. It looks like it's a targa when you do this, but just look at that. Just like the original cars, it was such a key ingredient of the GT40 that the Ford GT just had to get this right. And as I told you, the design team spent a lot of time poring over and measuring original owner's cars in order to find inspiration and get this right. So given the size of this piece, quite a light action. It doesn't require a strong man to open, but it is a very dramatic entrance to what is a dramatic car. As you then look forward into it, you can see another distinctive feature from those 60s originals. You've got these vented seats, so there's actual holes drilled into the seats themselves in order to aid ventilation for those racing drivers, to try and keep them cool in what must have been an incredibly punishing and hostile environment. But obviously one thing you do have to watch out for is the potential for the Ford GT guillotine effect, i.e. whacking your head on it when you get out the car and when you pull the doors closed, you don't really want to scalp yourself. But if you're quite tall, there's every chance you will do that. Another noticeable feature of the Ford GT are these big vents here which lead directly through into the engine. There's two of them, one on the side of the car, one here on the rear haunches. This of course is the rear clamshell which you lift up and you can reveal the entire car as you're looking at right now. With both of them open you can see the whole thing opens up just like a Le Mans racing car which it is of course a tribute to. Round the back of the car is where it gets particularly sexy in my opinion because you've got slats here within the stripe, some extra additional vents here all allowing that engine supercharger to breathe. It's an enormous piece this rear clamshell of the car and also one thing you don't really notice that much is just the way that the tail here flicks up for aerodynamic stability just like the original Mark 1 GT40. The rear of the car is slanted downwards and it's dominated by these enormous brake lights which have got integrated reversing lights on. The stripe actually continues all the way down to the bottom rear bumper and goes behind it and you've got two enormous exhaust pipes actually protruding through the rear bumper and you've also got a rear diffuser which I didn't really realize it had until I sat right up close to it. But the one thing you can tell about the Ford GT without knowing anything about the engine or the size of the engine or the power output is it must generate an awful lot of heat 
because there's vents all over it. It might as well be open to the elements for the amount of venting and cooling that is on offer here. Overall then, the Ford GT is an instantly recognizable, visceral, incredibly romantic and historical shape. It looks like it's just driven down to Le Mans, competed in the race, and then driven back here to the Car Guys HQ. I should also like to highlight that Jason very, very much wanted to be here to film this car. It's one of his all time favorites. And the fact that I'm doing it without him is, let's face it, quite a betrayal. Now this car has been kindly lent to the Car Guys by its owner, Andrew, and it is an American import. This is not one of the original 28 cars that came to the UK. This one was bought after that in 2005. It's a 2005 car and it is chassis number 50. So it is an early car delivered originally in America, but now it's over here. Who fancies a big man-sized portion of big block US of A? Let's have a look at that engine. In order to access the clamshell, you first have to reach under here and pull this lever here. That then releases the clamshell. You then need perhaps two people, ideally, to lift it up slightly and then push back these two catches to free it. And then you just push it back to reveal into the bright sunshine that 5.4 litre V8 supercharged engine. This is the Ford Mod 5.4 litre V8 aluminium block developed for the SVT F150 Lightning truck. It's got H-beam connecting rods, forged aluminium pistons, a dry sump, twin plate clutch, six speed gearbox, and it's enhanced with an Eaton screw type supercharger. And this mighty power plant endows the Ford GT with 550 brake horsepower, 500 foot-pounds of torque, which is 678 newton meters, and therefore delivers a top speed of 205 miles an hour. 0 to 60 comes in 3.8 seconds, and that, ladies and gentlemen, means it was as quick as a contemporary Ferrari. The thing you notice more than anything else about this engine is it is massive. Here we are then, inside one of the most famously designed cockpits almost of any type of car. It is so fantastic to actually be sat in one of these. I can only imagine what it must be like in one of the original GT40s, but remember what the design team tried to do here was to recreate that GT40 feel as closely as they could, but with modern materials and obviously modern dimensions because at 40 inches tall, anyone who watched Top Gear will know that Jeremy Clarkson couldn't actually fit in one, but he could fit in one of these. You sit quite low on these ventilated seats. They're pretty big though. I'm quite broad at the top and these fit me pretty well. And we have this colossal transmission tunnel going all the way through the car. Enormous speaker here so you can play your favorite Bruce Springsteen tunes. Ahead of me, I've got quite a small steering wheel with the Ford GT logo in the center. It's a three spoke and there are no buttons whatsoever on it. So this is a serious racing machine with very few distractions. Even here, there are hardly any buttons. This section here is reserved entirely for ventilation because when you're in a Ford GT, ventilation is very, very important. There is a lot of heat that you get inside here, not only from here, but just everywhere, particularly today, which is the hottest day of the year, folks. So this main dial is the hot and cold. You've then got the fan speed. You've got where the ventilation is directed and you've got the all important air conditioning button. You obviously got to be careful of the doors when you pull them closed because you don't want to chop the top of your head, but they are surprisingly light. You grip hold of this bar here and you give it a good old tug. There you go. Just down to my hand here, we've got electric window switches and also to lock the car. You've then got electric mirrors here and to open it, there's a very prominent latch just here, which you tug and it opens it up again. So all very easy, all very intuitive. These are fantastic toggle switches, which again, ape the ones from the 60s car. They're recreated here in plastic, uh, but they do look authentic and therefore they look brilliant. You've got one here for the lights, you've got the fog lights, you've got the uh, dimming switch for the lights in the cabin. You also have the rear screen defrost and you've got your hazard warning lights there. So it all is designed to look ultra cool and very 60s. And when you then look ahead of you at the dials, you've got seven dials. On the left, we've got the all important engine temperature. So you wanna make sure that that colossal 5.4 liter V8 
doesn't overheat. Rev counter directly ahead of the driver. Oil pressure is the next one. You've then got a voltmeter and you've got the supercharger uh, boost gauge, fuel level, and the actual speed you're going, it would seem is a little bit less important because it's way over here on the right, but it is angled towards you so that you can see it a little bit more clearly. Then just below it, we've got the engine start button and you've got a power socket and then a stereo tucked right back in here so you can hardly see it not very important really and you can also turn off the passenger airbag using this very prominent section here and then the only other things to mention in this cabin is manual handbrake very prominent as you can see and of course a manual gearbox a stubby six-speed manual and when we get moving i'll talk a little bit more about what it's like to use this but there you go that's a guide to the inside of the ford gt i think now we need to start this baby up and get it out on the road. Oh, ow! Ow! That's the only time I've done that. like that I'm in a Ford GT on British roads yes it's left-hand drive but anyone who's driven left-hand drive cars will know that you acclimatize very quickly almost instantly in fact what I'm hoping is I'm going to acclimatize quite quickly to the width of the car because it is quite wide as wide as an F40 and as if to prove the point I've decided to drive through the tiniest town in the world so this is pretty tight along here, and if I can get the Ford GT through a town like this, then I can get it anywhere. Oh, it does feel pretty tight, actually. Oh, it's very tight there. Oh, there you go. It's fine. It's fine. No problem. When you press the indicators on this car, you get a, like a very feeble little beep, beep, beep noise, which is um, odd. Like the F40, initially you get used to the thump, thump, thump of the cat's eyes in the middle of the road. That tells you that you're over a bit too far. Now, a quick word about the gearbox on this car. It is very close ratio. It's sort of cantered over towards the driver and all the action happens within a period of about five millimeters. Reverse, first, third and fifth, all within a very tiny space. Because reverse is hard over to the left, you keep worrying about going into reverse by mistake. So you kind of shy away from the left, hard left side a bit. And that unfortunately means that the first time you drive a Ford GT, you will almost certainly pull off in third, as I have done, thinking that there's something wrong with the clutch. But actually, it's just that I wasn't brave enough to get it into first. Once you do get used to it, it's no problem whatsoever, and it just pulls away cleanly. But you do find out that actually the engine is perfectly capable of pulling away in higher gears. But then it is from a pickup truck, and the plus of that is that Ford made millions of them, which means servicing is cheap and easy, and parts are readily available. This is not some flighty, foreign, fragile, bespoke supercar. The red line comes in at 6,500 revs, so you can tell that it is a large, lazy motor. It's not a high revving thing, this, but there is a decent amount of torque and a decent amount of muscle. It's pretty well damped, which means it's soaking up all of these horrible potholed roads. The ride is very good, which almost certainly means that this will be a pretty comfortable long-distance cruiser. The thing you really need to know about driving Ford GTs is that they are a lot easier to drive than you think they would be. You think they would be a real handful, but because it's a Ford, it's just not. It's really, really easy. The steering is light and very simple. It's heavily assisted to cope with those enormous rear tires. The gear stick, which initially feels like it is set quite hard in concrete, actually moves about quite easily. I'm in sort of third there. If I want to change to fourth, there you go. It's so easy. It's a lot easier than in the majority of supercars. Visibility is pretty good because the screen is enormous. It's a bit pillar boxy, but it's good visibility there, good visibility. I can see the haunches of the car through the mirrors. The only place where the visibility is truly terrible is over your right shoulder in this left-hand drive car because if you come up to a junction, 
you're not going to see anything. So you actually have to position the car quite strangely so that you can get a good view of any oncoming traffic. And that's about the only Achilles heel really. The width and the difficulty of a left-hand drive car, that's it. Everything else is an absolute breeze. Now remember, this is a 2005 car, it's 18 years old. But I have to say, it feels fresh out of the box. Fortunately, the air conditioning in a Ford GT is extremely good. So it keeps you nice and cool when everything around you is exceptionally hot. But I guess what's surprising is that it is very quiet in here. It's very quiet, it's very comfortable, there's no stress, everything is easy to use. Driving a Ford GT is a piece of cake. Look at that, and the road starts to open up and the Ford GT makes even more sense. Oh, here we go then. Here's a nice little series of bends. Yeah. Oh. oh, and it corners, it corners really well. Oh, what a stable platform this is. You really do feel like you could do 205 miles an hour in this. It just feels so stable. Oh, I think we're gonna have to uh, attempt some beans here. I think this is the right place to do it. I'm gonna put it down to second. Here we go then, are you ready everyone? Ready for some beans in a Ford GT? Here we go, foot down. There comes the power, there's the supercharger. Thank God that the brakes stop as well as this car goes. There's a lot of confidence there in those huge vented discs. Oh, it corners so well. It corners so well, this thing. You wouldn't think it would, but it really does. There's so much mechanical grip going on here. The pedal's are also really well positioned for heel and toe. So if you're flying up towards a junction, you stomp on the brakes, you just roll your right foot over lift the throttle, change the gear and then back on it again. It just allows you to keep the whole thing balanced. The more you drive this car, the more you begin to flow. Everything just loosens up and it just becomes such a joy. I really didn't know if I was going to like this car. I suspected that I just really wouldn't take to it, just wouldn't care. But actually, it's great. It's a really great car. And also, because there's 4,000 of them, it means they're still quite affordable. There are still a lot of these cars around and because they're all left-hand drive, it doesn't matter where you buy it from. So what do I like about the Ford GT? Well, I love the looks. I love the fact that it's a facsimile of that 66, 67, 68 winning car, but updated for the modern era, it's larger but it's still the same looking car. I love that. I love the fact that it's so usable. The steering is light, the gearbox is light. The visibility is pretty good. I like the dials, how clear they are, how easy to use. You know exactly what's going on with the car all the time. I love these vented seats. They look so historic. I love the fact that you can open the whole car up and expose it. Look at all the underpinnings and how it all works. What do I not like about the Ford GT? Well, I don't like the fuel consumption. It's really, really bad. I'm not sure I like the cutout doors. When you forget about them and smash yourself in the head, that's a little bit annoying. And I have to say, I find the engine a little bit characterless, a little bit soulless. It does the job, the power's there, but it's, it doesn't really shout about it. And it doesn't sound half as good, obviously, as a GT40. If I'm 
getting a bit picky, some of the switch gear, uh, the indicator stalks in particular, and the uh, door opener are a little bit plasticky. And I'm not massively crazy about the fact that Ford chose to put electric door handles on the outside to open the car doors. That to me seems like a potential weak point. Luggage space too is laughable. If you're doing a big trip in a Ford GT, you need to have a support vehicle because you aren't getting nothing in this. If you're on your own, you can use the passenger seat, but if there's two of you, no chance. All you're gonna have to do is keep on the clothes that you're wearing. And I suppose visibility at junctions, particularly to the right, yeah, that's not so much fun either. But I can definitely now tell what all the fuss is about. So if I'm being really honest, I'm not sure I ever really hankered after a Ford GT. It wasn't necessarily a poster car for me, it's more Jason's favourite than mine. But I never really had one iota of want for a car like this. But I do now though. I have to say it's a far greater car than I expected it to be. I thought it would just be some big wobbly, floaty, you know, all show and no go type American recreation, but actually it's a truly great car. Not only does it look the part, but it's just so easy to drive and enjoy. But I have to say a huge thank you to the owner, Andrew, for lending me this car. It is a cherished example, it is very low mileage, it is in beautiful condition, but he wanted me to show you guys what this is all about. Thank you for watching this episode on the mighty Ford GT. I hope you found it interesting and exciting and entertaining. I certainly did. If you like what we're doing on the car guys, please subscribe, leave comments and likes. There'll be another episode next week.